number three, pole position, Freddie Spencer, the only man faster than the lap record in practice. This is a 19 lap, 80.5 mile race. Then there's Kenny Roberts, then Eddie Lawson, then Marco Lucinelli, and completing the front rank, Raymond Roche, number 52. In the second rank, Jack Middleberg, Uncini, Katayama, and Ron Haslam. And they are straining now, keeping the front brake on, rocking the bike slightly. All two-stroke engines, the flag goes up, and the German Grand Prix is on. And a beautiful start by Marco Lucinelli and Freddie Spencer. And Marco Lucinelli leads into the first right-hander from Freddie Spencer, and Barry Sheen has been miserably left. There is she getting away, last of all but one competitor. And as if Barry hasn't had enough misery because he had his works bike refused to ride, he was refused permission to ride his works bike. He's out on a standard market, Suzuki, and he's starting last but one for the German Grand Prix. And already it's Freddie Spencer on the three-cylinder Honda leading his teammate, Marco Lucinelli, world champion of 1981. And they stream through. Now they're on their way up to the off curve in this boomerang-shaped 4.1-mile circuit. And uh, the question is, where are Kenny Roberts and his teammate, number 27, Lawson, in this race now? Because it is Freddie Spencer there, the man who won all three races this year. And Kenny Roberts is in fourth position. Freddie Spencer then won in South Africa, he won in France, he won in Italy, he has a maximum of 45 World Championship points. By the way, the number one in the top right corner of your screen means one lap and it'll change every time the lap goes. And it's Roberts in third position, there is Lawson, there behind him was World Champion Franco Uncini, and they stream through on their way now to what is called the stadium section, which is where 100,000 Germans are seated, and Marco Lucinelli takes Freddie Spencer and goes into the lead as they go into the stadium, with 100,000 Germans seated there. The rest of them are spread out around the course, and Marco Lucinelli, who was right off form last year, but who's sixth in the World Championship this year, and who seems to be right back on form, is leading Freddie Spencer then. Honda, number five, Lucinelli leads. Honda, number three, Freddie Spencer second. Then it is Roberts in third position as the rest of them come round the right-hander at the Opel curve at the end of lap one with 18 to go. It's Roberts in third position. In fourth position, it's another Honda. It's Kathy Yama. And there is Lucinelli. Now, this is a second gear, men, 80 miles an hour. They accelerate up. And as they disappear round the right-hander there, they are gathering speed. They are on their way to the first of the two chicanes in this circuit. And Kenny Roberts, three times world champion, who's in third position at the present moment, was praying for rain, and there he is, he's closing. Roberts, the diminutive three times world champion, Kenny Roberts, is closing, and now it's Freddie Spencer of the Honda in the lead from Lucinelli. There is Roberts, and see that, that Yamaha really getting a switch on. And Barry Sheen is sliding through the field from the back. He has already moved up five places from the last one that he was in. It's Roberts in third position then. Spencer ahead of him, leading. Marco Lucinelli in second position, and already the race pack looks to me that the incredible and seemingly unbe unbeatable Freddie Spencer is leading from, and there they go into the left-hander of the chicane, Lucinelli second. Number five, Roberts in third position, and just watch the style of Spencer. And in fourth position is Katayama. Behind Katayama in fifth position is Raymond Roche on a private Honda, so the Hondas are doing extremely well. Number 54 there is Keith Hewan, the British rider on a Suzuki, as Freddie Spencer comes into the stadium section, and you can see now that he's broken away a bit, he's broken the toe from in second position, Lucinelli and the V4 Yamaha of three times world champion Kenny Roberts is definitely starting to close on the second place man, the Italian Lucinelli. That's Spencer, Lucinelli, Roberts. 
Katayama and Roche and Uncini and behind Uncini, Boot Van Dolman. And where, I ask myself, is Ron Haslam? Ron Haslam is in about eighth position now as the leader, Spencer, goes into his third lap. And, you can, and look, at, look at Robert. Robert is giving it everything he's got. And Haslam is in right-hander, now they're building up to 170 miles an hour, they're approaching the fastest part of the course, they go into the chicane, then second gear, 80 miles an hour, spins the lead, lap three. Watch for Lucinelli, there's Lucinelli, there is Robert, and it's quite obvious that the Yamaha is not handling as well as the Honda. Robert had considerable handling trouble with the Yamaha last year, they've done a lot of work on it, and it's a lot better than it was, but it's still not nearly as good as the Hondas, which are huge of this steady. Watch Freddie Spencer there. He's coming up to the off curve. And Roberts is now right on the rear wheel of the second place man, ex-world champion from 1981, Marco Lucinelli, who won his world championship on a Suzuki. Spencer, look at his knee. Now goes the other one, he just touches the ground, they've got special penny and Roberts is second. Up into second position there's got Kenny Roberts. Now, can he do anything about the lead which is held by the flying Freddie Spencer? Fast Freddie they call him and with good reason. And let's look again, there's Fast Freddie leading. Left, he just lifts his knee, lets it down again. And Freddie Spencer is only 20 years old. Roberts there up into second place. Spencer, 5 foot 10 and 185 pounds. He's a tall, slimly built lad. And sweeping round the right-hander in the stadium section in front of this enormous crowd. And this incredible man, and I use that word advisedly, because Freddie Spencer first came over to Britain in 1980. He won two of the transatlantic rounds of Brand Hatch and set the road racing world by his ears because he'd never been in Europe before. And now you see that Kenny Roberts is definitely pulling away from Marco Lucinelli. In fourth place, it is Phil Katayama, and right with him is Roche. In sixth position is Uncini, seventh is Bert Van Dalman, eighth is Lord, ninth is Mamela, tenth is Fontan, eleventh is Middleburg, and in twelfth position is Britain's Ron Haslam on the Honda. And Haslam starting to move up. As I talk to you, I see him take two places, he's gone up to tenth place. And Keith Hewitt, the second British rider on the Suzuki, is in seventeenth place, lap four, nineteen laps. German Grand Prix, Hockenheim, flat, fast, very fast, and there is the fastest of them all, fast ready on the three-cylinder, two-stroke Honda. Honda came back into the forefront of road racing last year with the two-stroke Honda, having tried unsuccessfully for a couple of years to develop a four-cylinder four-stroke to keep their four-stroke reputation. They had to throw in the towel on that one. And there is Robert second, Lucinelli third, and the battle between Katayama and Roche, and it's Katayama in... Whoa, and Roche nearly lost it there. It's Honda's first, second, first, third, fourth, and fifth. And one of those Hondas is a works replica. There is Katayama, the Japanese rider, number eight, ex-world champion in the 350 class. As we look now at the distinctive red and white machine of Kenny Roberts in second place, pulling away from Lucinelli, but not making anything up on Freddie Spencer as they go round the Opel curve. There's Spencer. And there is the leader. You'll see the number change to five. There it goes. And the gap between Spencer and Robert is 3.66 seconds on the fifth lap out of 19. Spencer, seemingly with all the time in the world, casually looks over his left shoulder to see where the opposition is. And here he is, the man, Freddie Spencer from Shreveport, Louisiana, three times winner at Daytona. He's been riding 15 years in his 20, 
because he started racing a motorbike, believe it or not, at the age of five. It's Freddie Spencer on lap 13 of this 19 lap race in second place. And Katayama catching him, Lucinelli catching him. In fifth position now, it is Lamela because Uncini has slipped down through the field. In sixth position now, it's Raymond Roche. Seventh is Mark Fontan. Eighth is Uncini. And in ninth place, Eddie Lawson. There is Freddie Spencer. Very smooth. Beautifully smooth start. And Katayama is soon going to take that second place. Lucinelli trying all he can to stay with the Japanese rider who passes Freddie Spencer on the inside and takes second position. So Spencer, who I thought was going to be in for 15 points, is in for a maximum of 10 in the World Championship now. That's dependent on him retaining his third position. He's fighting back against Katayama. Honda, second, third, fourth, and all together. There's the battle for fifth behind him. Katayama, number eight. And Lucinelli is ahead of Spencer, and there is the race leader, Kenny Roberts, who has been racing for 13 years, has won at Daytona twice, had a terrible year last year. There are the three Hondas, second, third, and fourth. And they go into the left hand of the slowest corner on the course, the first gear, 50 mile an hour, tax curve, with Lucinelli now up into third place, Freddie Spencer down to fourth. The leader, Kenny Roberts, is just crossing the line, he's crossed it to start his 14th lap. There he is. And from here, as the skies are darkening overhead, I look around me quickly. There's a very flat cloud behind me, but I think we're going to be all right for the remainder of this race. There are only five laps to go, including this. And in about uh, two minutes, 20, two minutes, 15 seconds or so per lap, that means to say there's only about another 10 or 12 minutes to go. And the fastest lap that we have so far is the man that you're looking at, Kenny Roberts, who on the fifth lap went round in 2 minutes 5.6 which is an amazing 4 seconds inside the 1982 lap record put up by and you see for yourself now this is going to be really interesting the crowd is standing up in the open they are putting on raincoats we'll see some umbrellas go up soon there is rain on the far side of the circuit the riders are on slick tyres the 250cc race was stopped on the fourth lap earlier today, the riders had to come in and uh, change tyres and wheels for wet weather tyres. And if the rain really comes down, I predict that the 500cc German Grand Prix will have to be stopped. And it starts coming down very, very quickly when it comes down at Hockenheim. The rain is falling quite heavily on the stadium section. And Roberts is on slicks. He will, of course, be seeing the rain on his windscreen. He will be seeing the rain on his visor. He will feel a distinct lack of adhesion through his tires because these machines now are developing some 130 brake horsepower, which they put down to the ground through a patch of rubber on the rear tire, which is no bigger than the palm of your hand. And it really is raining. There's Katayama and Lucinelli. And they're getting the checkered flag ready. They're going to stop the race on lap 15 with Kenny Roberts riding away into the forest. They are getting the checkered flag ready to stop the German Grand Prix. And that will mean the full race distance in what has turned out to be a sensational race as we look at number 27, Eddie Lawson, and Lawson is in ninth position. The German Grand Prix is going to be stopped four laps short of its distance. Kenny Roberts has only to finish this lap. Two. So, 
the rain is falling now at Hockenheim on lap 15 with Kenny Roberts in the lead and as I talk to you the chequered flag is being readied to stop the German Grand Prix four laps full of its short distance as the 250 race was stopped earlier today for the simple reason that all these riders are on slick bald tyres designed for dry conditions the rain makes the course extremely dangerous, particularly as it goes between the forest and it's very, very wet. And Kenny Roberts is leading. Spencer is in second, is in uh, fourth position. In second place is Marco Lucinelli, and in third position now it's a change because up into second place has gone Katayama. The race is going to finish with Kenny Roberts winning four laps short of the full distance. Second will be Katayama, third will be Lucinelli, fourth will be Spencer, in fifth position will be Roche, and in sixth place world champion Franco Uncini. And there is Kenny Roberts almost home. Kenny Roberts riding round the outside to lap a tail ender, taking it very gingerly indeed, little knowing that as he comes out of the right-handed Opel curve, it will be to see the chequered flag at the end of lap 15. He's within sight of it now. We're waiting, he's absolutely crawling round the Opel curve. The rain is lashing down. It's wetting the course, wetting the tires. Roberts is cruising to victory and the chequered flag goes out and Kenny Roberts has won the German Grand Prix here at Hockenheim after his magnificent victories at Daytona and Imola, which were non-championship events, that will give him 15 points. It will consolidate his World Championship second position, but still well in the lead is Freddie Spencer. Well, here's the full result of the race. Yes, Roberts, his first win of the season. Katayama, the Japanese rider, second. Lucinelli, third. Spencer has to be content with fourth place. First time he hasn't won uh, one of the Grand Prix this season. Roche fifth, Uncini reigning world champion in sixth. And the world championship then is like this. Spencer's lead is cut to eight points at the top. Roberts' first win gives him 35. Lucanelli, 25. Uh, Mamola, fourth. Uh, Fontan and Haslam joint fifth. Haslam uh, slips a couple of places, three places in actually.